So we wanted to get into the audio of RG3 that came out yesterday. It's him talking about what Caleb Williams should do when it comes to his draft status. It's widely speculated that the Chicago Bears will take him number one overall in the upcoming NFL draft. <coughs> RG3 has some life advice for Caleb Williams. Mm. Here it is. Caleb Williams should pull a Eli Manning and demand that the Chicago Bears do not draft him number one overall. After everything that's happened with just Justin Fields, can Caleb Williams really look at that and say, you know what? This is the organization that has my best interest at heart, and they're going to help develop me into the player that I want to become. Caleb Williams is on record saying that he wants to be legendary. He wants to rewrite history, and he wants to be the best that he can possibly be and win the most games he can possibly win. After the Bears took Justin Fields, the 11th pick in the draft, and turns him into a sixth round pick in the 2025 draft by trading him to the Pittsburgh Steelers? Can Caleb Williams really look at that and say, you know what? Yeah, this organization is going to help get me where I want to go. I don't think it's saying that. Eli Manning had power in that 2004 draft, and he let the Chargers know, don't draft me. I don't believe in the direction that your organization is going, and I don't want to play there. He refused to play for them, even threatened to sit out an entire season if they drafted him, and they still drafted him. And the look on his face when he's holding up the jersey said everything. So what happened? The Chargers traded him to the New York Giants for Phillip Rivers, also a 2004 third-round pick, and then the first and fifth-round picks in the 2005 NFL draft. What did Eli end up doing? He won two Super Bowls for the New York Giants. Had a great career. So, for Caleb Williams, don't get me wrong, guys. I thought Ryan Poles was having an amazing offseason up until this trade for Justin Fields. Because you trade Justin Fields so you can get some players back to help your team out this year. Because Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus, the head coach for the Chicago Bears, they're in a lame duck season. They have to win this year or they're going to get fired. And don't get me wrong. Hey, hand the football off to DeAndre Swift, throwing the ball to Keenan Allen and DJ Moore and Cole Komet. Those guys are phenomenal. This ain't anything about them. This is about Caleb Williams and what team out there gives him the best chance to be successful. Only he can deem that. Yes, I do think him going back to Washington, where he's from. He's a D.C. kid, went to Gonzaga College High School. Okay, I think that's the best spot for him. But he has to answer that question. And if he says, all right, I see everything that's been going on, and now I can make the decision and say, I don't think that the Chicago Bears is the best place for me or my family to accomplish all the goals that we want to accomplish, then he needs to let that be known. He does have power right now. And there's a lot to unpack there. Like, the problem with that approach is that Caleb Williams and his camp, specifically, like, I believe his dad is representing him at this point, mm -hmm. they're already being viewed as tough to deal with, tough to negotiate with. <clears throat> like, there were reports that they wanted equity in whatever team was going to draft Caleb Williams. Mm -hmm. Like, th that uh, the dad and, I don't know, Caleb, I guess, to some extent, feel like the rookie wage scale is unfair and they want to tr try to disrupt that. Like, now they're going to pull off the, we're not going to go to the, the team with the number one draft move. Like, it's a bold I don't, move. It's a lot. I, I think it's a lot. You know, I'll, I'll be honest. I didn't necessarily quite understand when Eli did it either. Yeah. Like, it, 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 I'm like I, I guess there was just a stigma against playing in San Diego at that point. Yeah, it was wild. I didn't quite understand that at that time. I mean, I guess you want to play in a bigger market. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I didn't quite understand it, but it did work out for Eli. I don't think it's like we're markedly better than the Bears in terms of, like, his opportunity to have success. I think his opportunity to have success. I mean, you could argue that the Bears – Surrounding have staff weapons. have more weapons. I mean, they're set yeah. up really I, I well. I think they do have better they weapons now. Keenan, if they it was more Keenan stark, Allen, maybe I yeah. would agree I with them. I mean, you got DJ Moore and Keenan Allen. I mean, you and, got two and there are rumors that they're going to take another wide out with the number nine pick, whoever they like, whoever's there at that point. Like, right. Right. That seems like a pretty good landing spot. I mean, they got <laughs> Swift. They got a good tight end. Right. He's basing it all on He's they, Fields. it didn't work with Fields. Yep. They got nothing in return for Fields. So that's not an organization you want to play for. But, like, Poles, like, Poles didn't draft Ryan. Uh, Fields. He didn't, he didn't draft Justin Fields. Like right. he inherited him, and then he realized, well, I have a chance to draft Caleb Williams. I'm going to get whatever I can for Justin Fields. Like I don't think he did Justin Fields dirty by dealing him. He dealt him to a good spot where he could possibly start over Russell Wilson at some point for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Like I think he did all he could, and he just had a softer trade market than anybody envisioned for Fields. Not a big return coming was, back. And, but and I like Fields, but 
you know, some of that you can put on fields. Right? For sure. Right? For sure. If it was like Carolina in Washington, mm-hmm. let's just take the Bryce, <clears throat> Bryce Young situation out of it. Yeah. But if it was Carolina, you'd say, okay, I don't want to play for that owner. I don't want to play for that organization. Right. That's a poop show right mm-hmm. now. I'm, I'm going to d- – you know, find my way out of there. I'm going to force my way out of there. Mm-hmm. But Chicago, there's nothing wrong with that franchise, I don't think. It's not a broken franchise. I wouldn't think so. Yeah, and, 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 and if those guys get fired, they'll bring in a whole new staff. And we already talked about the fact that, you know, if Caleb did force this move, which I don't think is going to happen. It's a big PR hit. It's a big PR hit, but also it could be tougher for you as a pro to play in the town you're from. I mean, the Chase Young example, yeah. not, not that they're sure. the same person, no. but – I mean, Chase Young was just drafted by his hometown team mm-hmm. and he got traded before the end of year four. Yeah. So, so I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I, you're asking a lot to, to try and force a team not to pick you number one overall if they are dead set on taking you. If you're the one guy they like, you know, I can't imagine they're just saying, all right, we'll, we'll trade that, you to Washington. That is an example, though. Remember, JP talked about it yesterday, how in the NBA it happens all the time. Guys are drafted. They're wearing the hat of their team. And then, you know, five on, minutes later, they're draft traded. Day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How many days later was Eli traded, or was it later that day? Do you guys remember? I have to go back and look. No. Um, I can't remember. That was so long ago. I can't remember exactly how it I unfolded. I feel like it was the same day, but I could be wrong. Maybe it was a day or two but later. But, again, that's that's rare. I mean, it's happened one time that we can remember. No, I know. It's you know definitely I mean? rare. So it just doesn't happen. I just don't think there's a stark enough contrast. I don't think Chicago is some hellhole like, as an organization. I think he could totally be successful there. He's got weapons. Um, I don't know. I I wonder if Washington fans. It seemed like a few weeks ago there 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 was a contingent that wanted to trade up to go get him. Right. Are you Team RG three on this? Are there people out there that believe that this is what Washington should do? That they should try to get involved. In if Peters and the the rest of the brain trust ranks him a lot higher than May and Daniels, and they feel like parting with draft capital is the right move, then I don't have any problem with them moving up. But if they feel like it's too prohibitive and the Bears are asking for too much just to go up one spot, then I would just stay is at there two any and, chance, and pick my guy. Is there any chance that Chicago doesn't have Caleb as their number one? And we're all just assuming. I mean, there's a possibility, but I think it's pretty low. Have they made it known to people Caleb's our number one guy? I mean, I don't know if polls has been as tight. No, I don't think Adam they've said Peters. that. No. Is there any chance they just take Drake May? That they have Drake May as their sure, sure, of course, there's a chance. I mean, I don't think it's a big chance, but there's, I there's think a I shot. saw the odds are like minus four thousand or something. Right. That Caleb's gonna go one to the Bears. Right. So they must be leaking to someone that they're if if they get an opportunity, if they're at one, they're gonna take Caleb. They must have maybe, told somebody. Maybe there's like a a, a lower level personnel exec who's got. The skinny? That well, may, they must have leaked to it to somebody. I don't know. They, somebody had to leak it to somebody that they're taking Caleb one. No, I just think it's that he's... Did they by far better than the others? Yeah, yeah. Common sense is that he's going to be the top quarterback taken. Yeah. Okay. I mean, those, those things change. They've yeah. changed before. Right. That's what I'm saying. I mean, we're, we're listening to all of the, you know, the expert, the analysts that are saying, yeah, he's clearly the number one. So I would assume the Bears feel that same way. But anything can happen. What if they have him ranked like similarly to May and <clears throat> Daniels, or I don't even know McCarthy. I mean, I doubt McCarthy's in that discussion. But then they might be willing to to deal if, if they have if them they all have ranked all those guys, fairly evenly. Yeah, probably. But I, I'm I'm just assuming that they have one of those guys ranked higher than the others. And the assumption is yeah, it's Caleb. That's the assumption. Although we got some guys that say, who's the guy that said Caleb was a fifth rounder? Yeah, that was one guy. We, I mean, it's the only guy on the planet, I was think, that, that, that feels that was way. Was that that kind of like random it was draft the scout. guru guy? Yeah. yeah. He used, uh, was he a scout for the Jets? Or? Right. Yes. And it, it's I don't know, Hodge, JP found him. And Merrill Hodge is the guy that also said he didn't love – no, he didn't love Drake May. He didn't like, love, he didn't yeah, love May. He's not By the way, did May you guy. see the, the clip? Somebody had it. By the way, I think Drake – or um, Eli Manning was traded on draft day. He was, yeah. I was just kind of Googling it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is a clip that I saw yesterday. I just stumbled onto it. I was in this Drake May wormhole or something. <laughs> and Drake May's rolling left, and he takes off running, and then he hurdles somebody. Have you seen that clip? And he gets rocked. But no one on the planet can look at that and go, well, he's not an athletic kid. 
Like, nobody could see that. Like, he's literally hurdling a guy, a, a, a linebacker or something. He gets popped, but he gets up there pretty good. I just think they're comping him athletically to Jaden Daniels, who... Right, understood. But he's but Merrill Hodge said he thought he was stiff. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know how you can think that when you see him hurdling a guy well, the way he is. <clears throat> that's why Tim Hasselbeck said, I don't know what he's <laughs> watching, but he obviously wasn't watching enough of the ACC network. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, right. eye of the beholder. People are all over the place with most of these guys. Listen, I'll be honest with you. I wanted to hear that RG3 clip and be, <clears> like, <throat> angry mm-hmm. and, and all fired up, but I'm not. It's like... He makes reasonable points. I just don't know that you want to be a disruptor that way. I don't think it's as bad a situation in Chicago as he's making. Yeah, I don't it know if that's the way you want to start your your maiden voyage in the NFL. Maybe, like maybe if you were draft, refusing to play, maybe for if the, it was Carolina at one. What other organization would it be that you just <coughs> definitely don't want to be a part of? I don't know. Maybe Cleveland or something. I mean, it, people don't like that owner, right? And they definitely don't like Pepper in Carolina, like you mentioned. Yeah. It just seems like a nightmare to work for. Yeah, I mean, I think Carolina is clearly the number one. It's a team that you don't want to play for. But uh, I don't know. I mean, whoever you get drafted by, you're going to get paid, right? <laughs> and if you're going to get paid, have good seasons, and then you're going to get a huge contract. Yep. So it kind of doesn't matter who you're playing for. If you just play up to your potential and you're putting up numbers, you're going to get a huge contract because that's what quarterbacks get.